Hello and welcome to this lesson. This is lesson 3 on using the Simo Quick tab of the Rig Genus add-on. In lesson 1, we created simulation bones for the hair on this figure as well as the sleeves and the cape. In lesson 2, we continued by also creating simulation bones for the back line and we also look at the Simo Meshes section and its options. Now in this lesson, we're going to look at this trend value in the Simo Mesh section and how we can use it to alter the behavior of the Simo Mesh. Now to use this trend value, I will have to select one of the objects. Uh, let's go with this left sleeve. Now let's play the animation so we can see how it currently deforms. Um, one thing I like to do before altering the strength value is to increase the frame range and this is to allow full effect of the simulation. You can see the current animation is just too short, ending only at frame 13 before cycling back to frame 1. And this doesn't allow the simulation to fully develop. Now to increase the frame range, we'll have to select the rig then click on this edge and drag it down to split the screen and now i'm going to change this bottom screen to the nle editor right here i would like to have the rig genus panel open on this upper screen there we go now back to the nle editor clicking on this button drops down the animation as a strip on the timeline now in the properties panel of the nle editor let's first collapse this active strip tab and then expand action clip and down here where it says repeat uh, I'll increase this value to about 20. Now when I zoom out on the timeline, you can see we now have a longer frame, spanning to around frame 240. Now with the strip selected, I'll go to the Animixer tab and then click this match frame button and that matches the end frame to the length of the animation. Now playing the animation, we should have enough frames to allow the simulation fully develop. Alright, so now let's return to the strength value of the simul mesh. Let's scroll down. Let's just collapse the anime setup for now since we don't need it. Okay, um, so now let's again select the left sleeve. So what we're trying to do is use this strength value to alter the simulation on this left sleeve. So here in the simul mesh panel, you can see I have left sleeve as the simul mesh. You can see we have two fields for adjusting the strength value. This first value is the weight level. If you're familiar with weight paint, you will understand that the weight level determines how much influence uh, a bone has over the vertices in a mesh. A weight value of 1 means that the bone has full control over the vertices, while a weight value of 0.1 means it has very little influence. So this weight level works in the same manner. So here in this field you can see we have a weight level of 0.1. So the 0.1 uh, weight value is being assigned to the bottom vertices of the mesh. To explain this better, let's go back to the simul mesh section and then click on this isolate button. So now I'll zoom in on this bottom region of this simul mesh. So this bottom region has the 0.1 width value assigned to it, making it the loosest part on this mesh. And the mesh gradually becomes more rigid towards the top. Let me select just this mesh. Now this top part of this simul mesh always have a width value of 1, which means very rigid, while the bottom part's rigidity is determined by the weight level we enter here in this field. Now when we play the animation, you can see that the top part of the mesh remains almost glued to the upper arm while the bottom swings freely. So now let's exit the isolation view as it is important to do so before altering the strength value. Okay, now I'm going to increase the weight uh, level to about 0.5 to make the sleeve stiffer. Now when I play the animation, we shall see that the sleeve becomes much more rigid. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that the frame rate might be moving too fast to closely observe the animation. So let's quickly look at how to reduce the frame rate. So first of all, let's pause the animation and then go to the output properties panel here. Down here under frame rate, let's click this field and then choose custom. Currently it is set to 24 frames per second. So now let's adjust it to around 10 frames per second and then play the animation. And now you can see the animation runs slower which will properly allow us to observe the animation. We can now clearly see that the sleeve is very rigid because we have the weight level as 0.5. But if we change this weight level value to say 0.3, you can see the sleeves become less rigid showing more movement than before. Now when we set the weight value back to 0.1, the sleeves becomes very loose, allowing for much more movement. So that's that for the weight value. 
The second field of the strength value is the percentage value, which works in conjunction with the weight level. You can see the percentage value is currently set as 10%. What this does is it applies the weight value, which is set as 0.1, only to 10% of the entire SIMO mesh. Let me go back here and isolate the SIMO mesh. I'll zoom in on this SIMO mesh and then select it. With the percentage value set as 0.1, it means only 10% of this entire mesh has that value of 0.1, which is around this bottom region. The remaining 90% of this mesh will gradually transition from 0.1 to 1 at the very top here. Let me explain that again. Only 10% of this mesh has a width value of 0.1, which usually starts from the bottom. And as it goes up, the width value increases incrementally. So if this region is 0.1, the next set of vertices will be 0 0.2 and 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on until the very top is 1. Okay, so let's exit the isolation view. Now, when the percentage value is set as 50%, this means that 50% of the same mesh will have the width value of 0.1. Let's return to the isolation view so I can explain this again. With the percentage value set as 50%, the bottom half of this mesh will now have a value of 0.1, which will make the bottom half of this mesh very loose. Now that means that gradual increase in width value will start from this mid region. The next vertices is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way up, which is always going to be one here. Now let's exit the isolation view. With the percentage value set as 50% and playing the animation, you can see how very loose this left sleeve is and this doesn't look very appealing. So let's adjust the percentage value back to 10% so that only 10% of the mesh has a width value of 0.1. So in general, using a width value of 0.1 and a percentage value of 10% often gives a very good result. However, if you're not satisfied with the outcome, you can always experiment with the weight level and the percentage value to get the desired outcome. So let's experiment with the values. And I'm going to take this to say 0.3 and so that the sleeve is a bit stiffer. At 0.3, it doesn't swing much. So let's make the percentage value 20% and see how that looks. Okay, uh, we can always go back to the custom frame rate here to reduce the frame rate to slow down the animation so that we can better observe the simulation. Now let's apply the changes we made on this left sleeve to the right sleeve so that the simulation is consistent. Even though we have these values for this left sleeve, uh, when I select this other right sleeve, even though the values displayed here are for this uh, left sleeve, these values are not automatically applied to the new selection. The add-on does not update these values automatically. So now to ensure the changes are registered on this other sleeve, we will need to enter the desired values in their respective fields, or we can simply click on the field to make uh, the typing cursor appear, and then press enter to register that on the new selection. Now the 0.3 value has been updated on the right sleeve. I will still need to do the same for the percentage value here. So I'll click on the field and then press enter, and that updates the percentage value on the right sleeve. So I think I'm okay with the result I have here. So now let's look at how we can enhance the overall appearance of this simulation by adding a wind force field to interact with the simulated object. Now to create a wind force field, while in object mode, press Shift A, then go down here where it says force field and select wind. And immediately we have the wind force field in the scene, but it's facing the wrong direction. Let me collapse this. Now in orthographic side view, let's rotate the wind 90 degrees on the x-axis so that it blows in the direction of the figure. Now let's move the wind to the front of the figure and place that right about there. Now let's go to the properties panel and select the physics tab. Here we have the control options for the wind. But before making any changes to the wind settings, let's first play the animation and also return to the output properties to increase the frame rate back to 25 fps so now in order for us to see the effects of the wind on the simulated object we will need to increase its strength value so let's go back to the physics properties panel and then increase the strength value of the wind to around 10,000. and we can immediately see that the back line starts to below in response to the wind 
We can make the back line below even more by adjusting the strength value. Let's set the weight level to 0.1 and also increase the percentage level to 50%. And immediately, we should see that the back line below is even more. But I'll rather have a less profound effect. But I'll go ahead and reduce the percentage value down to 20%. One thing I noticed is that the cape isn't as affected by the wind compared to the park line. Let me show you why this is happening. So let's pause the animation and then select the cape. So now when I click the isolate button to view the cape's simu mesh, we can now see that the simu mesh of the cape is just too narrow, it's just too thin to be significantly influenced by the wind. To make the cape respond to the wind, just like the back line, we will need to remove the current simu bones and then recreate them with the collision mesh option enabled. Uh, this will create a larger simu mesh that can better interact with the wind. So let's go ahead and exit the isolation view. Now to create new simu bones, let's first select this rig, then reset it. Uh, so because the animation control in this rig is from the NLA editor and not the big action panel, we will need to disable the animation here in the NLA editor by clicking to uncheck this box. Now we can return to the Animixer tab and then click on this reset button to reset the rig. Now with that done, let's select the cape and then uh, collapse the Animixer tab. Now in the same quick tab, we can simply click the clear bones button and to remove the existing simu bones. Now to recreate the simu bones, go to edit mode. Then double click the center edges to loop select them. Ctrl 1 to switch the orthographic back view. Click the create bones button. Make sure to have the collision mesh option enabled. Leave the bone count as 7. Set the parent bone to chest upper and then click OK. Now that we've created the simple bones for the cape, we can view its collision mesh by selecting the cape and then clicking on this isolate button. Now we can see that the collision mesh is larger. Now let's exit the isolation view, re-enable the animation in the NLA editor. Now when we play the animation, we shall see that the cape is also now blowing as it is being affected by the wind. So that concludes these three part lessons on the same quick tab. I hope you found the video helpful, if so please give it a like and if not, um, consider giving me another chance by trying out any of my other videos. And if you're interested in the rig GNS add-on, uh, you'll find the link in the description below. Kindly subscribe for more content on rigging and animating dust figures in Blender. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next time.